Back in the early 90s, the 16-bit era of video gaming had begun. The console wars were in full swing. It was Sega vs Nintendo, Mega Drive vs the SNES. And if you grew up during this time, I'm sure you can still hear this picture. Now, I didn't know anyone who had both consoles, and my parents certainly weren't going to splash out and buy me the two, so I had a decision to make. Was I going to go with the Super Nintendo, or was I going to go with the Mega Drive? The Super Nintendo boasted a wider colour palette, better sounds and a wide variety of kid friendly games whilst the Mega Drive supposedly boasted blast processing abilities and more 2 player games. Sega was leading the 16 bit revolution. But was my decision based on any of these things? Nope, I didn't know jack about any of that. No, the reason I went with a Sega console was simply because there was a Sega Mega Drive 2 and it had to be better than the first and by that logic had to be better than the Super Nintendo because there was no Super Nintendo 2 was there? So I ended up going with a Mega Drive. Each franchise had a mascot representing the best of each brand. Nintendo had Super Mario and Sega had Sonic the Hedgehog. Throughout the decades both characters have stood the test of time and have been reinvented time and time again starring in their own movies, television shows and of course video games across many platforms. The Mega Drive's flagship games was its Sonic the Hedgehog series. In the Sonic the Hedgehog video games you had to navigate through each level collecting rings for extra lives, traverse special stages to collect emeralds to reach a higher ability, bounce on top of robotic enemies for points and every couple of levels you would face the game's boss, the evil Dr. Robotnik. As a kid I had little to no understanding of any type of story that may have been going on. That was until 1993 when Sonic the Hedgehog the TV show came out. The TV show filled in all the gaps that we didn't even know was missing. Released in September of 1993, just weeks apart from one another, Sonic the Hedgehog along with the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog hit TV screens all around the world. I'm fairly certain that I watched both of these shows on TCC which was the dedicated children's channel at the time. The adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was geared more towards younger kids. Its animation and episodes kind of looked like someone put Roadrunner and Tom and Jerry in a blender. Its humour is very slapstick and the animation isn't great, but it's not the worst and certainly miles better than anything that's come out today. But the other show simply titled Sonic the Hedgehog. Now that was in a league of its own. While Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog took elements of the video game, this show completely took the world that the video games had made and built upon it, creating a rich story that was in line with the world and lore of the video games. The TV series made the video games make sense. Its animation was absolutely beautiful, as was its cast of cute characters. And in this video, I'm going to dive into why I think this series of Sonic the Hedgehog is the best. But before we get into it, if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. This will help boost this video in the algorithm and help it reach a wider audience. And with that said, let's jump in. In this version of Sonic the Hedgehog, the story is set on a planet called Mobius and is centred around the Kingdom of Acorn and the city of Mobotropolis. Mobotropolis has been conquered by the evil Dr. Robotnik, a mad scientist who betrayed and banished the King of Acorn to another dimension. Now ruling over the renamed city of Robotropolis, Robotnik continues to take over the land with his army of robots, polluting the land and conquering its inhabitants by using a machine called a roboticizer to turn its inhabitants of anthropomorphic creatures into robotic slaves to do his bidding. Sonic and his friends are the last group of freedom fighters standing in Robotnik's way. It's up to them to save the land, rescue its people and reverse the damage Robotnik has done. Sonic and his group of freedom fighters live in Knothole Village inside the Great Forest which is situated on the outskirts of the conquered city of Robotropolis. Knothole Village is beautiful and its architecture is unique. It's full of log cabins, cute creatures and is situated deep in the forest. It stands in stark contrast to the sterile wasteland that Robotnik has turned the city into. Kinda reminds me of the forgotten capital area in the Final Fantasy video game Final Fantasy 7. Sonic and his team who live at Nohole Village are quite the motley crew of characters. They've got depth and personality and throughout each episode I find myself caring about all of them. First up we have our main character Sonic. Sonic is a blue hedgehog with a too cool for school attitude and a love for chili dogs. Unlike a regular hedgehog he has the ability to travel at high supersonic speed, an ability he uses throughout the show to stealthily move in and out of Robotropolis in a flash, which comes in handy on all his various missions with the team. Rather than fight enemies hand to hand, Sonic uses his speed and other diversionary tactics to trick enemies into hurting themselves. Sonic often carries a special item gold ring in his backpack which provides him with a temporary boost of energy which allows him to run that extra mile. It comes in handy in dangerous situations like when he needs to make a hasty exit or help his friends get out of danger. In the video games rings are everywhere. 
but in the TV show, power rings were made by Sonic's uncle and appear every 24 hours from the lake beside the grotto inside the forest. Sonic can also spin his body into a saw blade, which helps him cut through doorways and hedges just like in the video games. Princess Sally Acorn is the daughter of King Acorn, but in the Not All Freedom Fighters, she is the tech wizard of the team. She makes the bombs, hacks the computers, and helps to coordinate the team in their missions against Robotnik. Sally has a scanning device with a built-in AI called Nicole. By today's standards, it's no big deal as we all carry around a device like this in our pockets. But back in the early 90s, it was a futuristic flight of fancy to think something like that could ever exist one day. Stuff like that was so futuristic and seemingly out of reach for my generation. Nicole can translate language, search databases, and is able to project a heads-up display portal style for the team to see. Sally is also Sonic's love interest. Working in harmony with Sally is Rotor Walrus, the engineer handyman of the team. He works to keep the village safe, creating many of the Not All Village security and surveillance systems. He is also just a good friend to the others, always listening to their problems and trying to make them feel better, and on occasion he will accompany Sonic on missions. Bunny Rabbit is the muscle of the team. She is a partially roboticized rabbit who possesses super strength as a result. This gives her an advantage in the field. She is able to rip apart and break open doors and barriers, she can extend her legs to reach higher places, and she also fights enemies head on. She has got a bubbly, deep south Texas hospitality vibe to her personality and accent, often referring to Sonic as Sugar Hog. If Dolly Parton was a rabbit in a cartoon, it's Bunny. Then there's Antoine de Pardot. What can I say about Antoine other than he's a French fox with a blonde hairdo who wears an 18th century French soldier's uniform. He's kind of cowardly, struggles to pronounce certain words, and is about as useful as tits on a nun. He's always getting spooked at the thought of a nearby enemy or his environment. He's obsessed with Sally and jealous of Sonic, and whenever he can, he tries to worm his way into her affections. But he doesn't seem to notice that Bunny actually likes him, which is really strange. Besides him being a cute character, it's hard to find a redeeming quality in Antoine, and for that reason he's my least favourite character. Tails is a fox with two tails who, in the video games and other TV series, has the ability to fly by spinning his tails like a helicopter blade. In the Sonic 2 and 3 video games, Tails is your trustworthy sidekick who fights alongside you, but in the TV series, he's a kid that the team look out for. Sonic's uncle is one of the fallen ones, and is Sonic's top priority to rescue. Chuck is an extremely clever engineer, and serves as the team's undercover agent. Then we have the bad guys. Dr. Robotnik is the show's main villain. He's a conniving, evil sociopath. He's the villain you love to hate. He's hell-bent on world domination and genocide. He actively uses his technology to turn all who inhabits the world into robots to serve his will, while at the same time draining the planet's resources to do so. He's as terrifying as a children's television show villain can be. He's like someone in a HR department, drunk on power. Kind regards, you blue little hedgehog. Robotnik's primary mission is to find the location of the Knothole Village and capture Sonic and his team. Despite Robotnik having a seemingly endless amount of resources, he can never seem to get anything right. Then we have Robotnik's second in command, Snively. But he's not so much a second in command or a sidekick, he's more of a butler. Snively is Robotnik's lackey who does Robotnik's bidding and on occasion serves as an advisor who, despite all of his best efforts to make Robotnik happy, always ends up failing and having his life threatened. Despite being Robotnik's lackey, Snively for me doesn't come off as evil. He strikes me more of a lad who's just been caught up in a difficult situation and doesn't want to die, so he's sort of just going along with everything. Then there are the SWAT bots who are part of Robotnik's team. Basically they're the show's version of Stormtroopers. They never fail to fail at whatever they set out to do. During my rewatch of the series, much like when I was a kid, I found myself in awe of the animation. The attention to detail is just on another level, and perhaps that's because of how it was made. There's something to be said for doing animation the old fashioned way, because every scene is just so beautiful. Everything is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. You could literally pause this show at any point and land on a work of art because that's what it is. Animation that's been painstakingly hand drawn and shaded to perfection. It's something I feel today's animated shows lacks. Even with shows like Epo that for the most part look excellent, I feel they fall short in certain areas. Computerized animation sometimes just misses the mark and doesn't quite look right, and as odd as this sounds, it can throw me off a little. But Sonic the Hedgehog ticks all the right boxes for me, as does its opening theme. The opening theme is just excellent, it really gets you pumped for what you're about to watch. The theme tune explains who Sonic is, and its visuals show you what he's capable of and what he's up against. Both elements explain the show in a fast and easy way to understand. The scenes in the intro complement the song perfectly. 
I really love it. Season 1 does a great job at laying the groundwork for an epic tale of good versus evil with a lovable cast of characters. In this first season, we see the gang infiltrating Robotropolis and Robotnik's lair, going on various missions, doing what they can to protect their patch of land and sabotage Robotnik's plans. It's great. I suppose my only criticism is episode 13, the season's finale. Season 1's finale is surprisingly the show's weakest episode. The animation seems a little off, looking more like an episode of Adventures of Sonic. In fact, everything seems a little off. It looks more like a pilot episode than a season finale. The shading of the environment seem wrong and its main characters look like they're still in the idea stage of development. For example, Sonic's backpack is a different colour than usual, Rotor is purple instead of his regular blue colour, Swapbots are now grey instead of their usual dark blue. Both Bunny and Sally also look completely different as well. We also see Tails fly for the first time in the series which is something he tends more to do in Adventures of Sonic. Even the humour seems a tad off and unpolished, with all of the characters not quite acting like themselves. What happened here? Did they just decide to use the pilot episode as the last episode, or did they bring a different team in for the story and animation? Who knows? Either way, something seems off. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad episode by any stretch, but it's definitely the odd one out. And for a closing episode, it falls short of whatever I was expecting, I guess. I think I was expecting a cliffhanger of some sort, but take my advice and take this episode as a standalone episode. I don't think it technically counts. In season 2 I noticed a lot of improvements. The animation, somehow, looks even better than the first season, and the characters seem more fleshed out. We see Tails uses Tails to fly, which is a nice touch. They also gave Sally a coat. Now, it wasn't something I really noticed until they gave it to her, but without a coat, Sally looked naked. And once you notice, you can't really unsee it. The blue coat oddly enough fixed an issue I didn't even realise was an issue. It also makes her look more empowered in some way. I guess they tried to make improvements to Rotor as well because he looks a little different too. Season 2 also introduces us to a new character called Dulcie. She is one of the last of the dragons left on Mobius. Dulcie has the ability to fly and carry her friends on her back, but unfortunately finds it hard to stick to landings. She also has the ability to breed ice to freeze her opponents. Season 2 is all about undoing the damage Robotnik has done. Throughout the series we see the team scouring for parts to make a de-roboticizer, to reverse the roboticizing process and return everyone back to normal. We also see the team unite with other freedom fighters on the planet. Out of all the different series and variations of Sonic that's come and gone, I feel like this particular one is the series in its prime and at its best, and is far more suitable and superior to the current generation's cartoons. The story is great, the animation is beautiful, and its pacing for a kids TV show is just fine. Throughout its two seasons is a cartoon rich with story and depth that I feel reaches a satisfying conclusion for both adult and children alike. It isn't too violent and despite having a dark story, it isn't horrifying. It's no secret that in today's media, there are all sorts of agendas and narratives at play that have now leaked into children's TV. Depending on where you stand with all that, you might not agree or want your kids to be exposed to them ideals, as they are not yet a universal truth. Shows in the 90s, morning time TV especially, was all about leaving your brain at the door, forgetting the pressures of real life and immersing yourself in a different world. In my opinion, Sonic the Hedgehog is a safe bet. It has enough action-packed adventures to keep any kid entertained and a rich enough story to keep adults invested too. Sadly, Sonic the Hedgehog only got two seasons. Why it ended, I guess, was its competition. As I covered in my last video, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came out around the same time as Sonic and was taking the world by storm. By 1995, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had reached Beatlemania levels of fame. And while there certainly was room for both shows, Sonic unfortunately didn't get a third season. It definitely got overshadowed. Sonic was very much a product of the 16-bit era of gaming, and by 1995 that era was also coming to an end. It could also be said that in the changing pop culture of the mid to late 90s, the rad too cool for school rock and roll attitude that Sonic had also started to become a little out of touch. But despite this, when it eventually went off the air, I missed it. I really enjoyed re-watching this show, and I think if you're on the same wavelength as me, you might also enjoy it too. All of the episodes are currently on YouTube, but they may not be there forever, so what are you waiting for? Go make yourself a couple of chili dogs, sit yourself down and check them out because they are way past cool. This has been Sonic the Hedgehog the TV Show 1993 by Richie Kearns Productions. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.